everyone. I am Lila Fleming, an assistant professor of epidemiology and biostatistics for the Department of Global and Community Health right here at George Mason University. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my experiences teaching during the initial coronavirus emergency and the challenges that we as faculty faced and as well as the lessons that we have learned as we move forward. So let's travel back in time to March 2020, which feels like, honestly, like it was forever ago. At this time, there was a major shift that happened in the US and we have entered a quarantine period due to the novel coronavirus. This happened also at the same time that we were having our annual spring break here at Mason, and a decision was made to move all our in-person courses to online for the remainder of the semester. So the first challenge we were facing as faculty was changing the format of our in-person courses to online. For me, this meant shifting three out of the four courses I was teaching in the spring. And even though I had extensive experience teaching online and had converted several in-person courses to an online format over the years, I felt like I was overwhelmed and I did not have everything I needed to do this quickly. Other faculty members were facing an even bigger challenge as they may have never taught online. So we had a monumental task ahead of us. First, translate all our courses from on campus to online, learn new technologies to allow us to do this effectively, and then we also needed to focus on the quality of our instruction and stay attuned to the needs of our students. On the student side of things, they were being introduced to a brand new way of learning course material. So things like lectures, coursework, class interactions, absolutely everything related to teaching in the classroom had completely changed overnight. Our next challenge was going to be choosing an online teaching style that was either synchronous or asynchronous online learning. In the case of synchronous learning, we would be meeting the students live through Zoom, for example, during our regularly scheduled class. In the asynchronous side of things, a more traditional self-paced approach to online classes would take place and meant that we no longer had any set meeting times as we did on campus. So at this time, we had to ask ourselves many different questions to make the, the decision of what time of, of learning system we will use. First, I needed to ask, do I know how to use video conferencing? Can I manage a live class through Zoom? Do I know students and I have the internet bandwidth to stay connected during live lectures? Are students still able to attend classes basically at a set time, even though that everything has shifted online? What about access to course materials? Could they accomplish this if they relied, for example, on, camp on computers that were on campus only to complete their coursework? So as you can see, we had many more questions that we had answers for, and we had very little time to assess whether our choices were going to be effective and were going to help student learning as well be effective in our courses. So typically, when I prepare an online course, I approach this by first establishing a very consistent format throughout the course website. I map out every topic and course material I'll be including in each week's module, and this will help me create and maintain cohesiveness and continuity in the course delivery. In pre-pandemic times, it will take me about two to three months to build one online course. Now I had three courses to deal with and a week to plan on how to move forward in a digital classroom. Equitable access to technology and tools for faculty and students was also a major challenge that we had to face as we move our courses online. Things like access to computers at home, available and reliable internet access, access to specialized software that maybe was only available on campus, access to webcams and microphones for lecture attendance and recording, and even access to a dedicated quiet place to work from home. We, these were just some of the challenges we were encountering in this emergency period. So we were really going into an uncharted territory here. Academic honesty in online classes also became a concern. Just like faculty, students were incredibly overwhelmed, and a few students resorted to using websites that allowed for sharing of completed coursework material and for students to basically use this coursework material in their classes. 
Some of students also began using some copyrighted images and materials for in their academic work without permission or without properly citing their sources. So this became a huge challenge for faculty to find solutions for. Of course, there were other challenges that everybody was facing during that time. Our, we had changes in family life and jobs and increased anxiety due to the uncertainties of the virus. So back in March 2020, we had no time to think, we just needed to act and do so quickly. So how do we manage with all these challenges? So to handle the pivoting of courses to online, I managed it by using my typical online class format. I created weekly modules that included an introduction page to let students know what they needed to accomplish in that set week. I also created a short lecture video for each week that was no longer than 20 minutes, not only to help maintain students' attention span, but also to ensure that we were maintaining some normalcy. I also provided quizzes and assignments to help students work through the course material. In regards to the regularly scheduled times, we I basically shifted those online to become office hours. And of course, I opened myself to be able to allow students to ask for digital or online, um, let's say, office hours to allow us to move forward. So in my case, I also went ahead and chose an asynchronous format. And this was because it allowed more flexibility to students to attend lectures. This also helped minimize the stress of not having internet access at home or having multiple family members sharing one computer. So hopefully this was helping with some of the accessibility issues that students were facing. There were also accessibility issues faced by faculty, and these were handled in the departments individually. So, for example, providing computers for faculty to take home. Um, because also we had a state at home order here in Virginia, we had a very restricted access to our offices, and this meant that faculty did not have access to teaching materials such as textbooks, for example. So the department managers and other college staff came to our rescue and scheduled individual times to give us access to our offices during the emergency. Also, other services at Mason quickly mobilized to help support faculty and students. Mason's information and technology services helped us by providing increased access to proprietary software for students and faculty and guided faculty and staff that who were working remotely on how to do so. The Stern Center for Teaching and Learning that focuses on teaching excellence and digital learning were actually mobilizing all their instructional designers. These are experts in teaching and learning, particularly online, to help support faculty that were working through updating their courses. We also had faculty supporting other faculty. Through the STEM Center, or the STEM Center actually created these primer workshops to help train faculty to be ready to teach online for the fall and spring, uh, sorry, for the summer and fall of 2020. So these primers were run with a faculty lead, which I fulfilled that role for the College of Health and Human Services, both in the spring and summer. And I worked with an instructional designer from the Stern Center as well. We both collect these particular primers. And they were simultaneously running multiple primers by mid-April. And this meant that multiple faculty at Mason were being, were actually being trained. We also had um, to deal with the issues of academic honesty, we had to make sure that faculty gained digital awareness. So we ended up using things like self safe assign and respondents lockdown browser to help minimize potential issues in academic integrity and maintain the integrity of our courses as well. So now that we overcame all the mission challenges, what were less what were the lessons that we learned through all this? So the first lesson was we needed to keep things simple for faculty as well as students. We as faculty need to use the tools that we're familiar with and know well. And then once we're comfortable using these current tools, then we can learn new ones to improve our course delivery. By keeping things simple, we also help create and maintain a streamlined course format. And this also increases accessibility of course material and promotes easy navigation of the course website for students. Essentially, we need to think about quality over quantity. Another lesson that we learn is that we are resilient and we can adapt. We can rise above any challenges by supporting one another. 
I know that at this point we're tired and we're in desperate need of a break, but we need to also step back and remember everything and look at everything we have accomplished during this very short period of time. And this all happened because we work together. So we should consider this a major win. Continuing training on new technologies for faculty is also going to be a must. Platforms like Zoom and Blackboard Collaborate were critical for us to move our to online learning, and these platforms continue to evolve. So learning the advances of various video telecommunication platforms, as well as other online teaching technologies, will help us improve student engagement in our courses and our content delivery as well. This may even help improve students' studying and learning skills. Finally, online teaching and learning will continue to grow. Students who are supposed to who are exposed to online learning now and who were not exposed to a learning online pre-pandemic are now telling me that they absolutely love the flexibility of this type of courses and that they feel that it was a much better fit to their learning styles. So colleges and universities around the US, we need to be prepared to continue to increase online offerings as well as offerings of fully online programs to meet the future student demands, who, which is something that we are trying to do here at Mason. So teaching in the time of COVID has been a challenge, but it has also been a huge learning experience. Together through this pandemic, we have acquired new skills. We have learned our resiliency and adapting capabilities, and we are now better equipped to the challenges that lie ahead. We are now ready to take on that new normal. I wanna take this opportunity to thank all of my fellow faculty, all my students, and all the wonderful staff here at Mason for the incredible work they have done and continue to do to move us forward during this challenging time. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you continue to enjoy the rest of the conference. Have a great day. Bye.